Blog Talk Radio. here with my co-host Helene Lipson. We're teaming up to bring you news, opinion, and wisdom from the latest waves of information entering our collective consciousness at this time. Hello, everyone, and I'm here with Helene. Helene, hello. Hi. Hi, CJ. Hi. Hi, everyone. Glad to be here. It's been an interesting stretch of time, hasn't it? June has been an interesting month for us. Oh, yeah. We made it. Today is, uh, it's like, it's like this month. I have just heard so many people going through so many changes, whether it's breaking up with loved ones or whether it's finding new love or whether it's been leaving jobs or a lot of people uh, have been getting either sick. Different, everything mm-hmm. seems to have been coming to a head in June. And I also feel like we're practically in a dream state. I feel like I'm practically in a dream state as I'm walking around and from minute to minute wondering mm-hmm. if life is a dream, if, 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 if we're in a dream state when we're living and, or as we're going about our daily conscious life and then we're in a dream state at night and the, the two are blurring together. I mean, hasn't, mm-hmm. there, hasn't it been an interesting month? Oh, gosh, yeah. I'd I'd say. I mean, it feels like the insights are coming hard and fast now. And we were talking the other day, Helene, and you were saying so so many fascinating things about this fourth dimension. That you were saying that when you're in a dream, you basically your consciousness goes to the fourth dimensional level. We're in the three D now, but it goes to the four D. And that was a day you were saying, I, I don't know if I'm awake or asleep because I feel like I'm in a dream and life is a dream. And it's just such an interesting topic. And, you know, that's a place everyone goes to every night. They go into the dream world whether they remember their dreams or not. But the the excellent thing is to be able to use your dreams to understand your core issues and you were saying some really excellent stuff about have remembering old dreams. Can you tell was, people about yes, what you're saying? patterns of dreams. You know, I feel like I know that there's some kind of shift going on. There is something mm-hmm. that is actually lightening us up and forcing us to release what is inside of us. And I believe that when we go to sleep at night in our 3D bodies, um, we actually leave our bodies and um, interact in the astral plane. We're either seeing people that were on the spirit side. We are processing some of our fears and some of our anger that were that had happened during um, our conscious waking times, and and so there's some processing going on while we're dreaming. But I felt like all of a sudden I started remembering the dreams. Patterns of dreams. I had a dream where um, I would be, I I guess I had a recurring dream all my life, climbing up either playground equipment, scaling a building, climbing, 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 (laughs) climbing. And when I would get to the top of whatever I was climbing, I would all of a sudden have tremendous fear and then just freeze in my tracks, not know what to do. Mm. And, um, all of a sudden, in the waking moments, um, I started remembering the series, the series whether I was climbing playground equipment, whether I was climbing a building, whether I was climbing to the top of a roof, um, and I, would, I was left to think about that. It was almost like that fourth dimensional reality met the third dimension, and here in my conscious state, I found myself processing. What does that mean? I'm climbing, 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 seeking, seeking, seeking. 
and, but not sure what to do with everything I have or everything I've accumulated. It's been a pure fear mm-hmm. um, had come over me, like a fear of falling, a fear of what mm-hmm. to do. I was felt lost, and uh, I had to take a look at that, what that was about. Um, that was my. Mm-hmm. That was what triggered off these thoughts about how they were so intermingled and so interconnected. I was even remembering people in dreams that I didn't know in real life, and and I feel like over wow. the last week and a half, my life was almost sur- a surreal blend of synchronicity. Even in my readings. Um, one reading after the next, it would be, I, I would take a chart and somebody would be born in the Bronx. The next chart, somebody would be born in the Bronx. Then somebody would be born in September. Then the next chart, somebody would be born in September. It, these wow. are these little cues to let me know mm-hmm. I'm, on the right, I'm on the right track. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, everything is flowing. And our natural state is to flow. You know, so... I yeah. guess the point is we are almost in, as we're changing, as this shift is happening, whether it's the solar flares, whether we're shifting our poles, or the poles of the earth are shifting, whether it's the astrology um, transits that are doing it, whether it's the collective consciousness, whatever is happening, we're becoming lighter. We're becoming lighter, and this veil is lifting between the third and fourth dimension, and I I just am so grateful to be alive. It's such a beautiful time mm-hmm. that I would be able to be alive to experience this. So I'm excited. Yeah, it is it is a really interesting time. And, um, you know, that was just, to me, such a fascinating topic. And there was definitely the fact that we were actually talking about this in the middle of the night together when it does seem like a surreal time a lot of people are asleep uh, we tend to get a lot of good information at that time of night or there's something that you're able to kind of be free of a lot of the stresses and worries that are in the energetic field around us in the normal waking day and so to be able to listen to you at that time I just thought it was so interesting that in that astral plane, you can not only remember and encounter your dreams, but meet people that you've only met in your dream life. Yeah. And you, and yeah. you wonder, are they, are they from another live stream that's happening right now? You know, maybe if time doesn't really exist, then a past life or a future life is really just happening right now. So are those people in our dreams, are they just symbols of ourselves, which is what is the case in dreams a lot of times. So you do dream analysis, as, as you know, that's something that I do. I say, well, you know, that person is just you. So what do you notice in them? And, and then think about yourself. But really, a dream can also be somebody that actually does exist, maybe in another life. Maybe you have a relationship with them in another mm-hmm. life. And... um you know, we're just in this body, in this time construct, in this 3D reality right now. So it's it's actually hard to conceptualize unless, like what's happening to you, I think, is even more intense. I think everybody's having their own way of opening up and, and noticing the thinning of the veils. It's just to me that you've been in this kind of dreamlike state and so many insights have come to you. And that they, they can happen in that really relaxed state in a way mm-hmm. that it can happen when we're in our normal work-a-day ego life. Um, it's not easy to be open to the messages that are coming to us then. So, yeah, I just think it's it's a really fascinating time. And I, I for one, am noticing that with these new insights and with – kind of letting go of old patterns or old patterns are coming up, like I said, hard and fast, noticing it. It's right in front of your face. Mm -hmm. You can't avoid it. Your issue was in a dream, climbing, 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 always seeking, seeking. And I think that's so interesting because we talked in our last show 
about that. We we mentioned mm-hmm. uh, Jeff Foster and the fact that he spoke about his own spiritual revelations or insights. And what that was was for him was to let go of the seeking, you know, seeing, looking for this, looking for that, something outside of yourself to fill you up. And why not just be? And maybe that's what, you know, for you, that's what's breaking down now, this this construct of needing to seek and look. I mean, there's, yes, it's wonderful information that we're gaining from other people at all times. It's part of the collective consciousness. But we need to be able to listen to ourselves and focus on clearing ourselves and, mm-hmm. and refining our instruments so that we can really channel this this true information. And I do really believe that so much more information is is being allowed to come in to the earth at this time. Absolutely. Absolutely. What we're able to see and our perception is expanding, is just completely expanding because definitely some kind of veil has been lifted. There has been some kind of change outside of us in our environment, even though it doesn't seem like that even though it doesn't seem like that. Mm -hmm. And for each person, it's different because they're coming from a different place in this. In other words, some, some people who are so angry or can't let go of bitterness or resentment, they're finding if they can't release it um, through their emotional body, it's coming out in their physical body. It is going to come out because that is weighing us down. And that makes us almost incompatible mm-hmm. with the new 4D confine that we will, well, I don't want to say confine, but the new 4D way that uh, we will, gosh, CJ, help me with this. <laughs> I, was thinking stru- I was thinking structure. It's you know, because you. it is a container of sorts. You you have to admit even our body is is a structure and a container for our consciousness. So yeah. So what you said the four D construct, or our bodies don't even want to be so heavy and weighed down with all kinds of heavy foods. We want to be lighter because we're moving toward a flow. This is the ultimate goal: is not to seek. Just like you're saying, it's about flowing. It's about unlocking pieces within us and releasing them so that we can just flow from one minute to the next and enjoy each minute. And uh, it makes for a happier life. It, it's, it's getting harder and harder for things to rock my world. It's getting harder and harder for things to rock my world, mm-hmm. especially when I think in these terms. I know that you, you do dream analysis. You actually you see people, you, you have sessions, and um, and actually speak to people about their dreams. I know most people that call you for sessions, they're calling because they want to know about a specific thing that might show up in their dream, like they were dealing with fires, or they were dealing with falling, or they were dealing with scared, or they were scared of a, somebody scared of a lion, you know, that mm-hmm. would pop up. So... What um what do you tell people in dream analysis uh, about what's coming out of them and and how how does that work when you have a session? Mhm. Well, that's a really good question. You know, well, basically, just to say where my you know where I come from in in my working with dreams. You know, I was a therapist for many years in California, uh, doing kind of traditional work with the base of you know Freudian psychology. But what I was really drawn to was a more transpersonal type of psychology, spiritual psychology, and Jungian psychology. And Carl Jung, he really believes in the you know the collective unconscious. He calls it unconscious, um, and and kind of working with archetypes that we all have these archetypes, which are like ancient symbolic roles that we can kind of embody in this lifetime. And there are things that are that are so ancient that they're actually in the cell, cellular memory of all human beings. And he believed that, to, you know, he worked with dreams very much in that way and did, used art therapy in the same way. And 
And so that was just very fascinating to me. So I always got into that. I did a lot of dream analysis for myself and my clients. And now I've changed it into being a much more spiritually focused and less psychological. But in terms of how I would work with a client, you know, they they come in, they 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 have a specific dream. A lot of people that come to me basically keep might even keep having the same dream over and over again, so that it's it's starting to really concern them or, or, or worry them, and they realize that there's there's great symbolism there to pay attention to. So as somebody would talk about a dream, I would help them to sort of break it down into pieces. And the most important thing being the feeling tone of the dream. Mm-hmm. So, like, if I were to talk about your dream, the thing, thing to note is your feeling that while you were doing the climbing, you felt fine, you were in the flow. Mm-hmm. You, you, That was very comfortable for you, that, that desire to achieve and that pushing yourself hard because – Scaling a building is something you have to be very strong to do. You have to have a lot of determination and and a lot of strength in your and lightness in your body. So mm-hmm. let's say this dream is really symbolic of of your career, you know, of how you move in life and how you're moving up. So when you're in motion and going for something, you feel great. You're totally in the moment and you are somebody who is very ambitious and a very hard worker. And it's very easy for you to get into the flow and keep going, bump, 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 right? So, but here you get to the top, and it's almost like you you feel like, well, in the dream, you felt like, oh, I'm going to fall now. There's that fear. And, And that's why dreams are great. They really use very concrete, symbolic, structures to to help us understand something it's so literal that feeling of falling and we know we all know what that feeling of falling is like or the fear of falling mm-hmm. that is a common thing in dreams and and yet if, if we look at it in the context of of your life and this could be anyone's life really there is that that sense of once you get to the top oh what am i going to do now like yeah. do i really belong here is this am i good enough to do that, you know, I I think that I'm wondering if that was a little bit of the there's feeling. A little of that, there's a little bit in that of that. And mm-hmm. then there's a little bit, I believe, the process, and we're back to what we talked about last week. Seeking means you never really find what you're looking for. The process of seeking mm-hmm. means you're looking for something. Mm-hmm. And if you're looking, you see, manifestation comes when you actually visualize having it seeing the product from the end, yeah. visualizing what you're doing on the roof, visualizing your mission and how it's important. The climbing of it is like the seeking, like looking for information, looking for answers, you know, uh, plodding along in such a way. And when you're climbing, you're not, well, I don't want to say you're not enjoying the moment, but your your tunnel vision only on one goal, but... Mm-hmm. That was just focused on how to get there and without the vision of what you would be able to have mm-hmm. or without the complete vision of what would happen when you reached your destination or your life at your destination, mm-hmm. you're a little lost. It would be like, I'm just going to keep, look, imagine I was looking for a job and I was just running around to every place all over town without a firm vision of, what job I would really help other people awaken and evolve in? What job would I be able to lend my strengths and talents to? What job would I have a meaningful purpose in? And so it, it's it's like just, but the doing. We're so busy doing, doing, doing. And that brings us back to the entire concept of the show. And there has to be more daydreaming and dreaming. You know, in a dream... I heard Wayne Dyer want to say, you know, if you're in a dream and you want to bring a broom closer to you, all you do is you just think about the broom and the next thing you know you're holding it. Mm-hmm. In in your dream existence, you don't think about, I'm going to have to go to the broom closet, open the door, grab the And next thing you know, you think about this and it comes. In dreams, everything comes to you. You just think of it and it comes. Mm-hmm. And that is 4D, and that is where we're headed. And manifestation is so important. So the running around, the the filling our minds up with 
nonsense and all the extra busy work is just a distraction. All we need to do is imagine what we want from the end. We need to see ourselves as the divine beings we are, and it's very hard when Mm -hmm. you have thoughts about yourself that maybe you're not good enough, maybe I'm not capable, maybe I might get rejected again, maybe I might be abandoned again, maybe... You know, maybe somebody will betray me again. And so it's very hard to think of the end result that you're going to get if you're expecting betrayal or if you're expecting that you could never get what you want because you're not worthy. Mm -hmm. So when these 3D duality issues plague us, we can't create because we, we, we can't have a wholesome vision of the outcome. So we talk about me climbing, climbing and seeking and getting there and tunnel vision. Tunnel vision to where? Tunnel vision Mm -hmm. to what? As I was climbing, I didn't have a picture of what I was going to be doing on that roof. Why I was even going to the top of that playground equipment. (laughs) What? Why did you do that? There was no... So it was just just the action of it. And, And maybe I was focused. A lot of people are just focused, well, I want to just make a lot of money. I just want to make a lot of money. I want to get money. I want to get money. And they're climbing, and they're climbing because it's the most money. I'll go to the place with the most money. They mm. lose track of what they're doing. What is their goal? How are they being of assistance to people? And is that a match for why they're here? This is what's coming up for people. People are wondering, why am I here? Who am I and what is my purpose? And it's getting harder and harder to be just unconscious. Yeah, I mean, I think there's there's so many of us on different levels right now that for, for maybe for, for a lot of people, and this is very inspiring, that they are aware of that. You know, what is this really going to help the collective? Is what I want to do going to be benefiting humanity and the earth. Um, I I do believe more and more people are so aware of that and have that as a focus and a desire right now in the light workers. And yet, we might be living with people that don't have that in their consciousness. We might be Mm -hmm. working with those people. We might actually be married to them or, you know, those are our parents. And they're very much stuck in that 3D polarity consciousness uh you know right and wrong good and bad money is good no money is bad (laughs) job is good no job is bad well i'll tell you something like this whatever level somebody is on and i know i spoke to my mom who is you know and my mom and dad they are they are strong when it comes to they want Mitt Romney as the president. They're very still mm. Mitt Romney good, Obama bad. They're so <laughs> caught up in that. And yet, and my mother, even at the same at the same time, and yet that's her framework in believing that these one this one person or this other person is shaping America. Mm. At the same time, she said, "You know, I feel funny lately. I feel like." I, I just feel like almost like out of it, almost like been doing things differently than I normally do. I just and I, and I find myself find it rewarding. She was saying I got back from a trip and I I didn't rush to unpack because that would have been the wrong thing, you know. I just mm-hmm. enjoyed being home for a minute. She said, and I'm just enjoying my friends. And your dad took a day off, and we just enjoyed each other, which is their work. They're they, their work. Wow. Work people. They're they're on they're on a fast track. So the fact that they, even they, they didn't know why. I don't know that they're they're not meditators and they're not, they're just, they they just did it because it's part Mm -hmm. of, this is happening to people collectively. I think that people are starting, they they don't know that they're, they they don't attribute it to, oh, there's a shift. Oh, Oh, yeah. Well, that's what I mean. I don't know why. They just Mm -hmm. know that, that even though they still have those 3D beliefs about, a president and and so on and so forth. They still are feeling different, and I think mm-hmm. mostly everybody on this planet is feeling a little different. Oh yeah, where, definitely. Where they're at is is based on what their experiences are and 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 uh, what they're holding on to well, still. Well, that you I know? think that and 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 also, or maybe people just becoming more aware of the patterns in others. 
in being able to see it maybe in the people that they work with, like noticing, wow, people are really negative at work and they always pull me down into this reaction. And, you know, like stopping your side. I guess that's what I see in my friends. Then being able to notice that by talking about it over and over and saying, you know, I don't want to keep doing this. I don't want to keep having the same reaction over and over again because it makes me feel bad. And there's a lot of self-sabotage involved with allowing yourself to go into your typical reaction. You know, the neural net of the brain is, is formed at such an early age Mm-hmm. And these connections are made by these branches of the neural net. And and the connections are hardwired. You know, Joe Dispenza talks a lot about this. He has some very brilliant ways of, of describing it. Um, but it, what he said is that when you're really trying to break a pattern, it, it's, it, you really have to put very concerted effort into it. And so mm-hmm. I think as people are noticing these changes, like, okay, but I'm going to change the way I do it. And it's going to be hard at first because imagine, you know, something that's hardwired in there, you have to, like, either dissolve the connection or, you know, burn it away, or cut it off. I mean, the way I really see it is, like, something kind of burns out and fizzles out, and then you're able to pull away from that connection and form a new connection. And just like you were saying before, if you have a vision of yourself and what you want, like, what is your vision? What would be your vision for when you... Get to the top. Where do you want to go from there? And having having a really strong vision of that, even if it's further down the road, something that can translate to the more the more recent place that you can get to, or the more the closer place. Because we all might have visions of what we want, and you know, ultimately, I want a healing center, a retreat center, which is a wonderful place, and I have many visions about that. But what is mm-hmm. the vision that's going to be for the next year or the next six months? Mm-hmm. It's going to be a little different. And being able to see, like, well, maybe it'll just be in, you know, I'll be speaking on a stage in six months. Mm-hmm. And I'll be giving talks to people. And I'll be really confident. And I'll be helping other people. And people will just feel so inspired and elated by hearing this information. And You know, so, like, I think... Just being able to, like you said, daydream and enjoy that. And it's not, it's it's so funny because we really were taught in school especially not to daydream, that it's a waste yeah. of time, that you're just distracting yourself and you're not working hard enough. And really it's yeah. the opposite is true. I have a lot of people that in readings, they're just not sure when you talk about the vision on the top they. They're mm-hmm. very good at a lot of things. They, they're they good at singing. They're good at building. They're good at welding. They're good at ceramics. They're good at, they're good at so many things that they haven't formed any vision of them doing any of those things, and they waver from thing to thing. And I say to these people, because that's kind of common, that, mm-hmm. I mean, because we don't just have one thing that we do great. I'm a good counselor. I'm a good singer. Was I going to be a singer? Was I going to be a counselor? Was I going to be a psychic? What was I going to do? Um, and I think that just the, there has to be a generalized vision of where you would want to be or what you would want to become. And then you can always integrate some of the other talents into the vision, the, the vision that you'd have for yourself. For me, mm-hmm. I would want to be, I imagine myself as a speaker. Maybe sometime I could integrate some of my music and, and into into being a speaker, or I sometimes just have a very general thing. Put I say I end up in a place where I could be of use to people and I can feel fulfilled in doing so, and then put that on the shelf and don't think about it. And when I think that way, then the synchronistic events start happening and everything starts lining up, and I know I'm on the right track. When we're trying to force one particular vision, sometimes it's not the direction or not the path. Um, it, uh, so either if somebody has one big thing that they're thinking about, well, they imagine how they would be in the future doing that and how they can assist people. Even that meditation where you imagine a most successful self, yourself, that is in the future from a year in the future comes to you. 
and you actually see see yourself in that successful body. And then you actually ask if you could enter that body, and then you feel what it's like to be that success, to have just completed that book and how you feel, to have just lost 100 pounds and how you feel, whatever it is that you would want in a year from now. And then you bring that feeling back into your own present body because it really not only does it raise your vibration, but you're not a seeker then. You're not a climber then. You're actually feeling it. And what you believe is what you create. What's emanating from your heart has no other choice but to come in in life's form. So it's very, I mean, that's interesting. It's interesting. So, yeah, what you were just saying is, is definitely, so when you say that, it has no other choice but to come to you. How yeah. How is that? I mean, I, I believe that, but how, let's explain well, for you, people, how does that happen? A, a lot of people, like if they saw a mirror or a mirror image, for example, a lot of people are actually just trying to change the reflection, the mirror's reflection, rather than if you're frowning in a mirror, you would mm. see a frowning reflection that's coming back to you. It, you can't change the frowning face in the mirror unless your face is changed to a smile or a change. In other words, that mirror and what you're getting back, this, this is a holographic universe. We're actually, whatever we get, is a result of whatever we're feeling. Whatever is in our heart and our feeling, if we're feeling anxiety, more things to make us anxious come up. If we're feeling anger, other things come up that make us angry too. If we're feeling peaceful and grateful, we keep finding more and more things that we could be grateful about. We're actually creating it with our hearts. And and our feeling in our heart is actually it's how we just where, where is our feelings create our thoughts, which create our actions, which actually create what what is happening for us anyway. So it's very it, it's it's yeah. interesting. It really serves us to let go of any piece of anger, any piece of unresolved karma, any anxiety and fear that has to be worked out. And that's why it's very interesting with the dream work because this is where it's seeping out. Mhm. Yeah. You know, I have a I you know, why you know, why is this repeating and why is it because it has to come out. As soon as you can see it, you can process it. Exactly. So do you notice that since you had these recurring dreams and it was really obvious this whole thing of climbing and the fear of falling yeah. since you had these realizations has something shifted in you yeah mm-hmm. things have been shifting in me now since i don't know that that solar eclipse may 20th really was a major thing for mm-hmm. me and i believe for for everybody here um between yeah. now and today i mean today is um venus is finally going direct so all things that have to do with relationships are mm-hmm. coming to a head. Anything that has to do with relationships, they were brought out, they had to be cleansed, they have to be worked out. You have to either leave somebody or you're either finding somebody. I've known two different people that got married in this time, eloped, wow. actually. So mm-hmm. they just eloped. They were so full of, so, so it's not only breakups, it's, also, it's, it's these changes, and, and uh, but a lot of things have been happening, actually happening, but it's also because something is majorly changing. There's something something unexplainable, it seems, going on. We're well, lightening up. Mm-hmm. Didn't you say it's really the thinning of the veils that's occurring? And, and, I mean, that's part of how we can become so aware of this information and then we're also that energy that's surrounding us that's going to being beamed at the earth at this time from the central sun you know that is forcing us to deal with stuff stuff is coming up i mean coming up you think of you know when stuff is coming up in your body it's basically you're having you're sick you're vomiting 
mm-hmm. you getting out. And the whole purpose of, you know, I know it's not a, a delicious topic to talk about, but when you're throwing up, it's to get something bad out of your body. Mm-hmm. Get it out immediately. Your body knows that it needs to just force it out any way possible, and that's the most direct route. Or, what, or you know, even the excretion parts. We're getting stuff out of us, sweating out. We have to get these things out in order for the body to be able to function at its at its optimal level. Mm-hmm. And I think so many of us have been functioning at a non-optimal level for a, a long time. Um, even if we're, I mean, even myself, you know, I've been dealing with with a, a, a kind of being sick for two months now, and I've had a recurring theme in my life of as much as I'm a healer, you know, of of when I was very young, I used to be chronically getting illnesses, and I think you know, getting illness a lot of times or getting a serious illness does lead people into p- perhaps being a healer. Mm-hmm. or being a psychic, something changes in us, something has to shift. Because I think when we are in our 3D consciousness, in life can kind of move along fine, then you're not really jostled, and maybe you're not forced to look deeper. But when these things do happen, I think a lot of people, like you mentioned, have been getting sick. And, and so I'm going to look at whatever my issue is with getting sick was is is not so much about... I mean, yes, I could have allergies, there could be something in the air, there could be chemtrails, but really what it comes down to is what does this mean in the greater scheme of of my life and how is it reflecting what I'm doing? So even if I'm somebody who, just like you, you know, I I have visions of great things and I I am moving up in the world and, and I'm feeling good about that, but even as, like, there's great things that I'm wanting to achieve and these things are coming to me, these manifestations are actually happening. And then the old patterns come up to almost sabotage me and, mm-hmm. and bring me back down to my old way of being. And it's, you know, it's it's actually painful now to be in that. Whereas in, when I was a child, a teenager, a 20-something, it, it was just kind of, I didn't even notice what it was. But that was the pattern I fell into all the time. Something great can happen. Oh, I trip it up and then it just doesn't happen. And oh, well, that's the way it is. But but I, now I, there's no way I cannot notice it. And, it, and it's going to happen, like I said, hard and fast. It's going to be so obvious. And that cold is not going to go away right away because you need to deal with something. And actually, when your body, when it has a cold or sick, it's trying to get stuff out. The whole point of mucus is to get into your body and grab whatever infection is there or whatever particles are in there and take them and pull them out of your body. So, you know, our whole medical system is is set up to be the opposite of that, the antithesis of that. Here, take these medications, suppress the symptoms, and then you can go to work. There's no time to really take care of yourself. And, And we have to look at it, Helene, like, is this part of the whole matrix? Well, we're taught that we're not we're in and of ourselves not that important. We don't mm-hmm. know much, and it's it's a it's a system where dependency is created. Things, and it's funny, you know, Amelia Benz. I had a, a, an interview with her. I just released on Monday, and she mm-hmm. was saying that emotional emotions that are not processed do manifest as physical conditions. Because these are packets of enslaved energy that just want to come out and be looked at. Uh-huh. And the body can heal itself. Yeah. Once you look at it and once you say, again, her line, fear, you're welcome here. I look at you, fear, I see you. And then infuse it with source energy. Infuse it with love. Mm-hmm. She even described in the video that a woman had um, terminal cancer and she had no treatment whatsoever and mm-hmm. really just processed the emotions that were behind it, how this developed in the first place, this bitterness, this anger, and looked at it and loved it and let it grow and say, you're welcome here. Grow, grow, grow. Yeah, and I heard that. <laughs> That was amazing to me when I heard that that video of yours, the latest interview. 
because yeah, she's terrific. She's terrific. She is. It, but you know, that's kind of scared me. The thought of letting your saying to your cancer, grow, 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 get bigger, and bigger. It, I know. It actually I, I felt that scary in my to mind, me. But then, but then it makes sense. It's like when the fear, when you look at your fear. I remember, okay, I was actually, my for one of my first interviews that I had for Blog Talk Radio, I was like a nervous wreck. I could barely talk. My heart was beating out of my chest. I had um, the show, you know, the Blog Talk Radio, they say, your show is on in 15 minutes. Oh, my God, I thought I was just going to have a heart attack in the amount of time <laughs> because I was so nervous. And I actually did the fear processing exercise. And I let it grow, and I said, well, what if I sound crazy? Well, what if I sound stupid? Well, now let's let it grow. Okay, how big? I let it grow bigger than the room. Let it grow, 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 grow. And it was almost amusing. It was almost laughable. Mm-hmm. It wasn't such yeah. a big deal. What if I said, what if I said, um, too much? What if I said something that, that, that uh, everybody didn't agree with? So, uh, whatever. Mm-hmm. Whatever. And it's just that it loosened me right up. So it really did take that. It was the only thing that took the panic away. You know, so that's I know, great. I know, I know it works. <laughs> yeah. But I think I think that's the thing. When it comes to illness, though, it's a little different from from a fear. I mean, it is basically yeah. a manifestation of a fear. No, you're right. Feeling. You're right. It's different. But, but still, it, it's it's like down the road. It's further down the road because, as, as Inelia said, and as we understand, it's, it's like uh, repressed thoughts, and and so since it's been repressed, it ha- it has to come out in some other way, and that's what is to me. I have felt that 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 power in my life, uh, in my own experience with with illness and in how I healed from it. Um, but that the idea of you say they tell you you have cancer. Mm-hmm. And there would be a lot of anxiety and fear around that just naturally, and we are a culture that's very focused on cancer. And so, you know, you think death, cancer, death, I'm dying. Even if no, when, no matter what kind of cancer, because you watch TV, you talk to people, they actually get a little scared, they start making out your death certificate. I mean, people have mm-hmm. a lot of reactions to it. So I wonder if part of that woman's healing was almost in not wanting to tell people about it because in some ways, I mean, there are things that can happen. You tell people and then they can come closer to you. They can pray for you. You can have meditation or prayer groups. And, you know, I've felt the power of that in my life. But I think just like when you have a dream that you want to manifest, sometimes telling a lot of people can take the wind out of your sails. Do that. Oh, you can't. How are you going to do that? How are you going to have enough money? That would be nice. It must be nice not to have to work. You know, whatever people's feelings are, they're projecting onto you. And the more we care about what other people think, sometimes, you know, we're not going to get anywhere with those thoughts. Because if we really don't want to hurt other people's feelings, then we would just do whatever other people wanted of us. And I think, you know, that was must have been a very strong woman to have that conviction in the face of her doctor I don't know mm-hmm. what kind of cancer she had, but I'll tell you, the doctors are not quick to say, you know, you have this, but do what you want, you know, a, a healer instead. And I just feel like, wow, that woman is very strong and brave. And um, I'd like to hear more about her because that's incredible. You know, even if we believe that thoughts are things that are, our thoughts create reality, and if we're, you know, we're meditating, we're seeking stuff, we can still have a phys- physical manifestation of something. And I think that's what I notice is that something that might have come up little by little by little throughout my whole life, now it comes up. It's it's so obvious that you can no longer ignore it. And it, it's like the cold that doesn't go away. Something is not going away until you're really going to turn around and face it and maybe my, you know, having this cold that turned into a cough that's like the sick thing was getting bigger and bigger. Okay, let's get bigger and bigger and bigger until mm-hmm. it's not going to it's not gonna scare me anymore. And, you know, my, part of my whole process was to go see a naturopath and a healer and, because that's something I believe in. And I do think a lot of it has to do with diet and water and taking in the right things. Um, 
But really, our mindset is creating our reality at all times. And I think that there is sometimes like a lag, you know. So maybe, you know, what interests me is working with people that that do have really high ideals and they want to move on and they and they want to express their talents and and help others, and yet they are in a job that they don't like or their relationship that's not totally fulfilling. And it's like here, well, I have these dreams, I have these ideas, I meditate, I pray, I do my yoga, and still, where's this life that I want? And I think well, sometimes it's a lag time. Thing, and, you know, as I listen to you, and it's true, you just you said something that just triggered something off for me that made me feel like when you're sick like that, when you're talking about a lag, basically all we know is the moment that we're sick, okay? We know we're sick. But what we fail to realize is that sickness is old. That sickness was formed from old thoughts that you were thinking a while back before that caused the creation of this illness. Mm -hmm. So it's very misleading because as you're in the illness, now you're coughing, now you're wheezing, now it's uncomfortable, the only thing that you can do is change your thoughts immediately to wellness. Mm -hmm. I am well. I'm well. And you have to focus on being well while you're sick because there's a lot. Because your sickness was caused when you were seemingly well Mm -hmm. based on your thoughts. And it was all created by emotions that were difficult to process. Emotions that were stuffed down. Mm-hmm. I was so hurt, but I don't want to think about it now. I hate him. I hate my ex-husband. Or I hate my, you know, do you understand mm-hmm. these strong, but I can't think about that now. Well, you know, a lot of people, you know, are, are don't understand that they're focused on making somebody sorry or manipulating or controlling or whatever it would be is unhealthy for them because they're just using something else outside of them or whatever the reason is. They've mm-hmm. created it before the illness happened, and there was a lag before the illness came. And then now you have the illness, and the hardest thing to do is to imagine wellness when you're not feeling well. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and, and so and that, that's the only way to get, that's the only way, because there is a lag, and then the next thing you know, if you are so intensely focused on wellness, you'll have no choice but to get wellness. Right, that'll just come to you. Mm-hmm. And yet, mm-hmm. and, and and so it's a great uh, symbolic representation of of what we can all go through in our daily lives, or you know, even if it's not about sickness, you're in that job that you hate going to, and yet you feel like you don't know how else to get out of it, but you have a vision of what you want, and sometimes it's really hard to keep that vision or to to know that you're divinely guided and you're protected and, and you're on the right path when you're working a job in a cubicle with your boss on top of you telling you got to do this, you got to do this, and you're like, oh, I hate that. You know, so when you have those thoughts of like, oh, I hate him, or what an idiot, you know, you've got it. We have to be able to notice it and stop and take a deep breath and and and, and let ourselves either do the fear fear processing you could stick in anger in that in that spot. It doesn't have to be fear. Anger right. get bigger. Okay, so let's really look at this anger because anger is really just a reaction to fear. Um, you know, when we feel cornered, when we feel attacked, we mm-hmm. either we go into a place of oh I'm so bad, or you know others of us can be very angry and be like that jerk. I don't want it. You know what I mean? So you, we blame the other people, but in reality, you know your relationship to that person, that jerk can totally turn around in in a day um, just by you changing your vibration and, and imagining even, God bless that, that person. You know, like, oh, God, the poor guy. He's, like, really stuck in that polarity consciousness. It must not be very fun to be in in his brain, in his mind. And, and to realize it has nothing to do with you. I mean, I think that's what it is. A lot of us just go into this reaction thing based on what our initial experience was in life and based on this, you know, neural net that we create, we keep repeating patterns with significant people in our lives. And 
it is very hard to notice it in the moment and and stay focused on what you really want when the feeling is, oh, I'm so angry, or when you are so sick and you're blowing your nose all the time, it's hard to imagine. I'm healthy and clear. <laughs> Everything mm-hmm. is wonderful. And and I think the less, you know, when you could talk to people that really believe in this stuff, like when you and I talk, I feel very, I feel lifted up. I feel like, yeah, I'm doing the right thing. This is wonderful, awesome. But then if I share it with somebody who doesn't meet me in that place, I can feel quite, you know, I, there's a part of me that perhaps in the past I felt more deflated and more brought down to, yeah, I guess they're right. But now... That is not affecting me so much anymore. Strength of conviction about myself that I am doing the right thing and that things are coming to me and believing it, even if it's not right in front of my face. I think there is, we're getting increased support. That's what it feels like now. I feel like that too. That's, I feel like that too. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are experiencing the same thing. And those who are not seem to be falling out of our lives, not purposely, not in a mean way, it's just not there. They're just not mm-hmm. there. The people that that are, but I do feel like everybody, everybody is getting closer and closer to taking a look at what am I, why am I here, and what is my purpose, which is actually the purpose of this program and why mm-hmm. I love doing this with you because we're actually sharing our real-life issues for the purpose of showing people that they're not alone, we're going through this. Everybody, there is nobody that is better than another person. There is nobody that is, it, it is, we're all divine beings coming to the realization of who we are right now. And by putting this out, by putting this out for people, they can listen and say, wow, you know, they're going through similar stuff that I'm going through. I'm not alone because I notice, you know, some of the people that used to be in my life, they can't completely relate to me. And I found different people that are more on my way. I, I don't know, but I mm-hmm. know that this is a very important message for everybody. And those who are growing at the same rate that we are will be growing along with us. Exactly. And so that's the connection there. It's like even though there were maybe the people that we're we're connecting with on a daily basis might not necessarily be uh, that supportive in the vision, we are part of – we're creating community and we're connecting to people in a way that maybe we couldn't have done 10 years ago. You know, the Internet the way it is now, the way you can do radio shows now on the Internet. It really is a brilliant thing. And you know that – that we're, we're affecting people that we're, we'll actually never get to see. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that we have had this chance to put this show together, and I know that we are running out of time. I do want to welcome our listeners to tune in. Our show is every other Wednesday, so it won't be next Wednesday, but the following Wednesday. And we love our listeners, and we thank you so much for tuning in to Cosmic Current. I'm Helene Lipson. My email address is helenelipson at gmail.com. And my website is www.insightsbyhelene.com. Great. I'm glad you gave people your email address. I think that's a good idea. I was actually thinking that too. And I'm CJ Miller. And you can contact me by my email address, which is Claudia Helmke Miller at gmail dot com. It's also available through my website, which is wholeearthhealing dot com. And that's right. Next week we are not on, and it is Fourth of July next week. So everybody have a wonderful Fourth of July Independence Day. Whoop it up! And uh, we look forward to having you join us next time. And uh, thanks so much, Helene, for being here today. Mm-hmm. Namaste. Okay. Namaste.